Hey, Joe Gilder here. Let's talk about templates in Studio One. A lot of people think about templates and they think in terms of something complicated that has all sorts of tracks and all sorts of routing and plugins and instruments. And it's like you have to think of everything before you create your template. And that's that's one way to do it. That's not the way that I use templates. There's a much simpler way that is super helpful and it can evolve with you as you evolve over time. So you don't have to get it right at the beginning. You can slowly change and update your template and it doesn't take much work and it's super simple and saves a lot of time. So let's jump into that. The idea for this video came from a couple of comments recently. Johan says, any chance we can get that template of you somewhere? I was referring to the template that I use. Um, Tone Deaf said, I must have mentioned that guitars are usually green or blue um, and wants a video explaining the color types used to represent. So just so you know, that's not a universal truth. That's just true for me and the way I set up my template. You can choose whatever color palette you like. But what's cool about choosing a color palette is if you do it consistently, it helps you navigate your mixes even faster. Because if I know that my drums are always blue, then I know to navigate to the blue section of my mix when it's time to work on drums. And that little, I don't know, that little, maybe it saves me a few milliseconds each time, but it seems to add up and make me feel whether I'm mixing a song with 20 tracks or 200 that I feel like I have a grasp on things because it's just grouped into, you know, eight or 10 different buses, eight or 10 different color groups. If you go with random colors, it's gonna take you a lot longer to find what you're looking for. But like, for example, I know bass is always red in my mixes, so I can find the bass track really quickly without even having to read that it is the bass track. So we'll, I'll show you how that looks here in a second. Um, and this is kind of related, we'll get to this in a second. GB uh, says, uh, can you tell the people over at Personas that the input controls knob should be simply be there by default all the time? It doesn't make sense to have to go and toggle it on and off um, and that we should be able to set some of these things um, up by default. Then, this is where it's really interesting, GB. You said, I understand one can create a template. However, one should not have to create a template for this. See, here's the thing. What you want on as a default, there may be, you may be in one group, half of Studio One users, the other half might not want it on by default, right? And neither is right or wrong. And, and maybe one day it will be on by default, who knows? But you can, I've, I've never actually, I couldn't tell you what's on and off by default because I never start from scratch. I always start from my template, which is what I'm gonna show you here in a second. So it actually solves your problem and it's not as restrictive as you might think. And then finally, Laco Official says, uh, why do you have to reactivate the input control for every new project? There's no, is there no way to keep it on all the time? And the answer is use templates. So if you're, if you're intrigued by how to have things set up the way you want it every time without making it overly complicated, keep watching. I'll show you how this works. So when I'm opening Studio One and I want to go into, I want to start anything, whether it's recording a new song or someone sent me tracks to mix, anything that happens inside of the song page, I go to new and it automatically sets up the user template tab here and I use this template right there this mix template okay I've got one for mastering one for mixing this one I created if it this one has like pianos and keyboards ready to go I never use it it's it's nice to know that it's there but typically when I'm recording something I'm setting up microphones and playing an instrument so I don't need a lot of stuff preset up for me it's fairly easy to set that up on my own but what I do need is a session that looks familiar with the windows like I like them, okay? So let's click on this mix template. Now, what's cool about templates is we can still make changes to the actual song itself, even if the template is set to one thing. So this template, for example, is set to 79 BPM. We can set it to 140 if we know we're coming in at 140. We can even change the sample rate. None of that is locked to the template. It just is a starting point for you. You can choose to stretch audio files. By the way, don't use this unless you know why you want it, just leave it off. It, it, it has caused, ruined many a life. Um, and let's just say, okay. And when this opens up, this feels incredibly familiar to me. I look at this and I say, I've seen this a thousand times. I can navigate this like a boss. Let me show you quickly what's going on. First, let me hit F3 to close the mixer. First, I've got these folders. Okay, and in the recent video, I talked about how these folders can be linked to buses. So this folder track also acts like a bus and it's connected here. So if I adjust the volume of this fader here, it's adjusting the fader 
over in the mixer, okay? And these folders don't have any tracks in them. These are just folders. So if I have a bunch of audio tracks, I can drag them in, put them in the appropriate folder, and it'll route it to the appropriate bus. It'll give it the appropriate color, and I'm good to go and to start mixing. Um, but here's the other thing. When I open up the mixer, check it out. One of the things you might notice is these input controls are here and available. I love this setting. This has not always been in Studio One. There were many versions where this was not a thing. You had to add mix tool to the top of your plugin chain if you wanted to trim the volume before it comes through your plugins. I forget what version, I believe it was maybe four or five, we added this and it's delightful. Um, in case you don't have it, you click on the wrench and you choose audio or sorry, input controls and that turns those off. So your default might open up like this and you think, man, I really want those input controls, those trim knobs, and you come over here and you turn them on. And understandably, to have to do that every single time is annoying because we live in a world where, okay, this is software. I should be able to set this up exactly how I want it without having to manually do things. That's the name of that's the name of the game when it comes to efficiency. I heart efficiency very much, which is why I wanted to make this video. So a couple of other things you'll notice I have icons down here. I could I could I could do it without the icons, um, but they're kind of cute. And since I just have them on the buses, I don't feel the need to put them on individual individual channels. That feels like a lot, but having it on buses is kind of fun. I've got these set up the colors that I like. So again, these are all my major buses. Most music I work on has these groups. Drums, bass, electrics, acoustics, that's four, keys, and I'll throw like, usually I'll throw strings into that category, lead vocals, background vocals. Those are my main buses. If over the course of a song, I really need a separate dedicated bus for a bunch of strings that I set up or a, some other thing that I think needs to happen, I'll create it. Or if I'm doing a song that has no drums or bass, I'll just delete these. I'm good to go. But they're here and they're waiting for me. I just mixed a song the other day that had all of these but no acoustics. So I just kind of got quietly got rid of the acoustic bus when I needed it. And then over here on the right, these are the types of send effects that I find myself using a lot. There's a root regular old room reverb, a big long plate reverb, a slapback delay, a short delay, which is I think set to quarter notes if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And then the longer delay is the beat delay set to half notes. So that's just kind of the default where it goes. You can't hear any of these, but if I start mixing and I think, man, my whole drum kit could use some of that room reverb, I can just come in here and I can send it to the room, and now I've got room reverb. I don't have to choose a preset. I know what preset I want. It's the one I always want, so I've got that built into my template. Now, you may have seen that I've got some plugins here across the top. These plugins are not doing anything. These fat channels here, all it's doing is waiting for me to tell it to do something. The compressors are all off. The EQ is technically on, but it's not doing anything. These aren't presets. These are just the ones that I like. I like this compressor and this EQ on drums. I like this compressor and EQ on bass. I like this for electrics, this for acoustics, this for keyboards, uh, this for lead vocals, and this for background vocals. So I don't have them doing anything. I just have the, the right components that I like to use on those, and I've got them ready. If I want to add compression to background vocals, which eight times out of ten, I don't. Uh, but if I do, I can click this on, and I can dial it in. But it's saving me the extra step of putting that on there because I find myself always using Fat Channel or always wanting to have it available. So I've set this up almost like a console. It's got an EQ and a compressor ready to go, waiting for me to do something there. The only thing that in here that's actually doing anything to the sound are these EQs on my reverbs because reverbs are notoriously muddy and it becomes a real problem because people don't realize that it's the reverb that's causing the muddiness. So I use these EQs on my reverbs after the reverb plugin to ensure that there's no muddiness. I can always adjust these, but I always have these on. So that's kind of, it's almost like a whole preset with those two together. All right, so that is a quick tour. Oh, and I do have a fat channel on my main mix with this compressor ready to go with the settings that I like for that. This is the only one that has some settings that I tend to just use. I turn it on, adjust the threshold, I'm good to go. Um, rarely use EQ on the main bus, but it's there if I need it. All right, so these are the settings that I use. And this is all saved with this template. So if I were to make any, let, let's say, for example, here's the big thing. A couple things about this template first, and I'll show you the really cool part of it. Um, I can set this up with the exact settings that I want. I can set it up with the mixer open or the mixer closed. Um, I can set it up with the metronome on 
or off. I can set it up with snap to grid on or off. So I, all the things that I tend to like, I can set all of those up exactly how I want it to be, exactly how I want to receive it. And then every time I start a song, if I'm recording a song, I start from here. Why? Because I'm going to eventually mix it and I want to have the buses there ready to go. I don't want to record a song on a completely blank slate and then export it and import it into a mix template while some people do that, and that's fine if you do. For me, that's a waste of time. I'm usually mixing as I record anyway, getting tones and making things sound good. So when I'm ready to mix, I want all my mixing tools there and ready for me. This gives that to me. If I'm doing a simple one guitar, one vocal track, I'll start from this template, and I'll just come in and I'll remove all of these buses and then I'll still do the same thing. I'll create it, an audio track. Let's do it. Let's create an audio track. Let's create a guitar track. We'll make a, just say it's a mono guitar track. We'll put it in the acoustics bus. Good to go. I can start recording on that track. And if I want a vocal track, I can just duplicate this track, call this Vox, drag it into the vocal bus. Now it's the right color and it's routed correctly. And I can delete the stuff that I don't need. Now, if you want to have some blank tracks here in your template, you can do that because it's your template. But um, it's, it's, it's a living document. What does that mean? That means what I do today, I can update this later as much as I want. So let's say this is the current template. And when it opened up, it showed me the mixer as well as the the arranger. Let's say I actually don't want it to do that. I want to open it with the mixer closed so I just see the arranger like this. This feels happy to me. This makes me a happy boy. So what do I do? I hit save. But this isn't saving the template. This is just saving this random song that was created. How do we save this as the template? It's really easy. I don't know if you knew about this, but check it out. Click on file. Come to save as template. And this window pops up. And you can choose to name it as a new template, which is fine. Or replace existing. This is a glorious, glorious feature. Replace existing pops up this window that shows me my existing templates that I have for any songs that I create. You'll notice there's the mastering template isn't here because that's a project template, not a song template. But I say this, this is the one I want to replace. And I say, okay. And it names it. I can change the name if I want, which is fine. I could add a date if that made me happy. And then I say, okay. Saved it, done, good to go. I close this song. I come back next Tuesday. I hit new. I say I want to create a new song called Boogity Boo. And I say I'm using my mix template. And I say, okay, check it out. Now it opened up. The mixer is not open. And that can be true of anything. I could have the exact settings that I want. You'll notice how my audio input control is on. That's always on. I've never had to turn it on unless I'm opening an old song that didn't have that feature and I turn it on for a new video that I'm making, for example. But anything I make moving forward will have the exact settings that I want. And if I come in one day and I say, you know what? I no longer like, um, let's say on here, let's say I no longer like this compressor. I find myself changing it all the time on the background vocals. What I really like is the Brit comp on there. I can say, Okay, that's easy. I've decided that. I come in here. It's blank. There's no audio files in here. So I can just say file, save as template, replace existing, choose the one I want to replace. And now my template is forever changed. And I can do this over and over and over. The one kind of little caveat there is if you start recording in here, and you make a bunch of changes that you like, you don't want to save the template with a bunch of audio files in it because then whenever you pull up the template, those audio files come with it, which just makes it can be frustrating. So what you do is you find things that you like, you open up a brand new song with nothing in it, you make the changes and settings that you want to that, then save that as a template. You could also do a save as, delete all the audio and all the tracks, remove unused files, and then save it as a template from there. To me, that's a little bit extra. I find myself not doing that all that much. If it's just a matter of, I really know I like this compressor, I can save those settings as a preset, open up a blank song using my template, load that preset where I want it, and then save the whole thing and replace the previous template. And that works well for me. So this works, I'm just I'm reiterating because I want to make sure it's clear. This works for when I'm starting recording a new song or starting mixing a new song because it's just here. It's, I'm going to need these folders and this routing setup anyway, so why not start everything from that? And you'll notice my, my metronome is on. If I want it off by default, I can set that as well. Okay.
Actually, it's off here. Never mind. I was wrong about that. All right. Final thing, if I want to have, you can do the same thing for mastering. So I've been dragging my feet on this, but I've set up a mastering template that has the metering options that I like. So for example, it has the EQ on the master output. I could set it up with a limiter here if I wanted. And then it's also got the metering settings that I like. So the FFT versus the octave um, spectrum meter, K14 instead of peak RMS for the main meter. These are settings that I found myself having to click every time, going back to our comments from before. Shouldn't have to. Okay, I get you shouldn't have to, but we can't read your mind, and we want to make this flexible and available for everyone. So we've added the ability to have a template. Same thing here. If I come in here and say, you know what, this is good, but I forgot to turn the smooth section on on this thing. Let me update that template. This is actually something I needed to update. I go to Save as Template. I click Replace Existing. I find the one. It's called Blank Mastering, and I say, bam. It's called Joe Mastering here. I say, cool. Now I'm good. Now check it out. When I open a new song using the mastering template, it pops up and that button is selected just like I saved it. So it's up to you. If you want something to be on every time you open a song, set it up that way. The caveat, of course, is it doesn't work on old songs because you didn't set it up that way. Shame on you. I'm kidding. Not shame on you. That's just reality, right? If I open a song I created before audio input even existed, of course it's not going to be on. That's a given. Um, maybe that's what you're actually asking for. Um, which may or may not be a good suggestion. But for anything moving forward, you have full control over how you want it to look, feel, and act. So use templates and work smarter, not harder. Thanks for watching.